Whether you have a legacy of military persons in your family tree or unaware that an ancestor participated in a conflict, exploring U.S. military records may be worthwhile. The great thing about having ancestors who served in the military is the records they leave behind for genealogists to discover. Howdy, welcome to Family History Fanatics. If you're new here, my name is Devin Noel Lee, and I love helping people find meaning and connection through their family trees. It's not always easy or quick, but it's always worth the effort. Today, let's talk about the effort of finding military records. While not every service record is available online, the documents you may find reveal when an ancestor served, where, and with whom. You may discover physical descriptions, names of an additional family members, and the stories from their service and injuries. So how will you find all the discoverers waiting for you to explore them? First, consider whether your ancestors were old enough to serve. When you do not know if your ancestor served in a military conflict, this chart will give you an idea of the typical age for those who served in the military. First, we have the Revolutionary War. Your first question is to determine if your ancestor, likely male in this case, was alive between 1776 and 1783. If the answer is yes, were they between the ages of 16 and 60? While there are cases of older or younger participants, we are trying to cast the most likely net first. Another way to look at this data is if your ancestor was born between 1716 and 1767 and they lived in the American colonies, check to see if they were alive until 1783. If they are, it's time to consider if they served in the Continental Army. Now, consider how many persons served in the official military. For this war, the total is about 230,000 men. The population of the American colonies was about 2.5 million persons. You can review a longer list of military conflicts in which the U.S. participated on my blog. The link will be in the description box. Perhaps you're noticing that different conflicts have a smaller or larger likelihood of your ancestor participating. The chances of your male ancestor serving in the Patriot Army were about 18%. By contrast, the possibility of them participating in the Mexican-American War is much smaller. The U.S. population had grown to 23 million, with 3 million being slaves. And as you can see, the number of men who served in the military during the conflict was only 112,000. If you assume about half of the population was male, about 1.1% of the total male population participated in this conflict. While you should consider if your ancestors served in the Mexican-American War, the chances they did are much smaller. When you have identified an ancestor old enough to serve, follow these steps to search military records. If you're unsuccessful, keep in mind the percentages I just mentioned. Before diving into military records, you must know a few details about your potential veteran. These details include full name, including aliases, nicknames, and spelling variations. Birth year and place. Where did your ancestor live before and during the conflict? And the name of the possible military conflict. Next, search your home, family members' homes, and relatives' memories about your ancestors. What records, photographs, letters, artifacts, or stories document the service of your ancestors? For instance, my grandpa Lou had photos of him in his military uniform, a military cross, several military bracelets, and his discharge papers in his home confirming his participation in the war. Next, consult genealogical records. Some gravestones may have engravings or signage identifying their service. Some cemeteries are resting places for veterans, such as Arlington National Cemetery, to name one. Census records are helpful. Since 1910, except 1920, census records have asked about their veteran status. 
The 1890 Veterans Schedule also documented service persons and their widows. Even though the major portion of the 1890 census was destroyed, the Veterans Schedule did survive. Obituaries, lifestyle features, casualty lists, enlistment rosters, and letters to the editor may reveal military participation, so always search newspapers. Other genealogical resources may also identify military participation. Let me know which ones I've overlooked in the comment section for this video. I'm a big believer in leveraging technology to do some research for me. Therefore, build your family trees on Find My Past, Family Search, Ancestry, and My Heritage. Let their algorithms recommend record hints for you. Notice how Ancestry recommended a pension record for the Civil War participation for Jacob Newton. In a previous video, Ancestry's hints directed me to Canadian military records I hadn't thought to consider yet. Granted, those military records were Canadian, but the principles of hints hold true for many U.S. military records. New record collections are regularly added to the Big Four genealogy websites, so let their hinting tools point you in the right direction, or a new direction you had not previously considered. Not every military collection online is indexed or fed into the hinting algorithm. As such, we can't rely solely on record hinting for military records. The next strategy is to dive into the collection catalogs or card catalogs on the big four websites. In this case, I'll use the card catalog on Ancestry. Filter to location. Filter to military records. Look at the newest collections available and the other listings. These entries can give you some idea of the offerings on Ancestry. Now filter the collection using keywords, record types, or time filters. Here's example one. Try colonial in the keyword field. Then filter by New Jersey. I have to click show more, scroll down to New Jersey, and then I have my list. There are currently seven collections that meet those criteria. Let's clear all and try another example. No keywords this time, but we're going to filter by New Jersey. So USA, show more, New Jersey, military, and then if we click on the 1600s, there are only eight collections. If we cut that off and do the 1700s, there are 78. Let's do one last example. Again, no keywords, and we'll filter by Michigan. So USA, show more, Michigan. Filter by record type of military once again. And there are 242 collections, but if we filter by the pension rolls or pension records, there are only 24. Now notice some of these entries have a title of US while others have Michigan in them. These variations are one reason I like filtering by location similar to how we search for colonial in the keyword box we can also add that term to the title and then filter in the fashion we did before but what other keywords or title could you use military unit names battles and conflicts towns pension files japanese internment and others that you see on screen if i haven't thought of one that you've found successful let me know about that in the comment section. We all benefit as we share ideas and suggestions and successes in the comments, so please take advantage of that section. Also, if you like the training in this video, be sure to click the like button and share this video with others. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you will be notified when we release a new video.
Not every military record will be easy to find and many will be offline. Your next step for do-it-yourself searching is to consult military-specific research guides. There are several available for you. First, I highly and often recommend using the FamilySearch Wiki. You'll find a link to a tutorial on how to use the FamilySearch Wiki in the description box. On the FamilySearch Wiki homepage, key in the name of a war or conflict. Once on the conflict wiki page, you'll see research strategies on and offline sources and other notes, such as record loss. There are several other guides I want to call your attention to. All links and information will be in the blog post linked in the description box. The National Archives website has a research guide segmented by each branch of service. Select a branch such as Marine Corps and you'll be guided to various topics and then to relevant research guides. Many of the collections will be offline, but at least you know what to look for if you plan a visit to the archives. Major genealogy archives and libraries have guides to military research, such as this one at the New York Public Library, and this one from American Ancestors, which is the New England Historic Genealogical Society. Many state archives have guides to researching military units, such as this one from Colorado. What's great about these sources is they can talk to you about record collections specific in that state. Of course, books and ebooks are available. Three highly recommended books include U.S. Military Records, A Guide to Federal and State Sources, How to Locate Anyone Who Is or Has Been in the Military Armed Forces, and the free ebook from Family Tree Magazine, How to Find Military Records. Even with our best efforts, finding military records requires travel that we cannot do or expenses we may lack. So what then? Then it's time to hire a professional to look up records and seek out items we haven't considered before. While this may cost several hundred to a thousand dollars, the time and energy you may save chasing the wrong records may be worth the rates. My colleagues at Legacy Family Tree and Trace can offer you these services. You can also reach out to the Association of Professional Genealogists to see who is experienced and active in military research. Now that you know the basics of US military research, let me know what other questions you have or successes you've had. Tell me all of that in the comment section and maybe we'll do a follow-up video based on your feedback. On your way out, like this video, leave a comment and subscribe. Now, watch this video to continue your research knowledge journey. Obituaries, lifestyle features, casualty lists, and ah.